Hello. How are we today? Hope we're all doing good. Uh, so let's let's just do a bit of ground service here with the chocks. Connect the GPU. Get that on, that on. He's going these to nav. That done. Those done. I'm doing pretty good, Aaron. How are you? Set that in a minute. Set those. Set that. Okay, so now I need to actually look. <laughs> look at my uh, briefing. Um, yeah, I'll download the PDF. Don't open in Chrome or in Firefox, please. Thank you. Um, zoom to page level. Actually, actual size. There we go. Oh, yes. Shut up. <laughs> Hello, 2019. I'm doing pretty good. How are you? So we have our flight plan and briefing here. Um, and I'll be bringing it in out of the screen here. Uh, so our flight level today is going to be 350. Let's start off with our weight and balance here. Because that's going to be the important thing. And I'm going to have to throw it over there. Uh... Payload. I just want to check that we're in the correct configuration or not. Payload. I better saved. Yes, it did. Fantastic. So. Uh, it should be. Ooh. No. Can I... No, let's just go 169. Error. Nuts. <laughs> if I set this to the... No, no, no. The um, 180... Actually, let's just set 160. <laughs> so, payload... Is 16... 36. They're all going to be men because I can't be bothered changing them all. 36. Okay, that gives us a payload of 13.9. We actually need 17.8. Um, and here's where I need to open up calculator. 17.8 minus 13.9 17.8 minus 13.9 equals 3.9 divided by 2 is okay uh 1.9 uh, we'll say 2 we'll say um oh wait <sighs> Ha! Uh, we'll say 1950. Uh, and 1950, that should give us 17820, and our payload is 17.8. That is perfect. Um, whoops. Gotta wait for the FB to reload. Chat is dead today. It is for some reason. Uh, fuel required today is 10 or 12.9. We'll go for 12.9. We'll go max fuel. Um, is it going to tell me my CG? No. Okay, so we'll go home. Uh, ground services, we need to call the fuel truck. And now we can start setting the FMC up. 
So pausing it will take from the left GPS. There we go. And our route is Oscar Yankee Sierra November to Oscar Oscar Mike Sierra. Um, let's get these on the move up as well. Get our panels lit up. How do I know what buttons to press? Um, basically experience flying this uh, flying Zebo mod. Uh, it is the long and the short, but uh, you learn through tutorials. I watch a couple of 737 pilots, a couple of A320 pilots, um, and just following checklists. I've got to turn on the electrical hydraulics. Uh, oh. What did I do the first time I got in this plane? Crashed. <laughs> Uh, set our flight altitude to 350. Here. Yes, shush. <laughs> shush windows. And our landing altitude in Muscat is uh, 25 feet, so we'll set, we'll set zero. <laughs> right, back down here. We are uh, Oman Air uh, 891, which is a fake number that I made up. And our route is uh, direct to Italy. And then Bravo 424 to Sable. Uh, Uniform Bravo 424 to Giska. Uh, Papa 316 to Radax. And from there to. Okay. The, the arrival, so we'll activate that. Departure is going to be F36. We're not going to be using a uh, SID. Uh, our reserves today are 2.3 plus 1.1 is 3.4. Cost index is probably 5. Uh, cruising altitude is 350. <laughs> I should do Dubai to, to uh, Heathrow? No. Uh, cruising winds are what? Winds are 255 at 3-1. Uh, ISA deviation... Actually, not use ISA deviation, but we'll use top climb temperature. Um, and our N1 limit today, we'll use. Ah! <laughs> Hang on a second. Takeoff performance. Uh, we'll be going off 3.6. It is dry. Wind is. Uh, Let's just make sure here. Uh, wind is five knots. What? Uh, oh, two seven three at five. Uh, outside air temperature is twenty. QNH is one zero one two. Um, optimum max five. Yep, and our takeoff weight is uh, 
takeoff weight is 79016 79016 uh, and our CG is it's in perf in it 8 I'm missing something here. Yes, that's all in. <laughs> okay. I'm guessing if I go in one limit, uh, go for 24k D rate and then climb one. Take off flaps five. CG. Oh, our CG is actually 24.5. Okay. So it'll be 149150151. So let's set our V2 in here. Hey, Matty and Captain Olaf. Did I have a weird breakfast today? No. <laughs> oh, the not flying to. No, no, I don't like long hauls, generally. <coughs> um, let's get the APU starting up. Because we're going to be taxiing straight out here. Also, I got scenery working uh, for Sana, which I actually forgot to activate it last time, which was the entire problem. Um, are we still fueling? Uh, no. Can the fuel truck go away now, please? Thank you. Uh, da, 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 da. So now I'll need to bring up some charts. So charts, taxi. There we go. So we are right here. We're going down to this runway, so we'll be taking out uh, Bravo, we're going up Bravo, and then on to Echo down to the end. Uh, which is a nice taxi. We're going to be 359 degrees as initial heading. And altitude initially will go up to about 9,000 feet. I need to set the QNH. There we go. It's now set at 1012. Uh, we can arm auto throttle. And get the flight directors on. And go heading select. Squawk we'll uh, 2010 for fun. Okay, APU is online. Let's get power to the bus. Disconnect the GPU. And uh, we can actually get the probes going. Do, 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 do. Am I forgetting anything here? I do not believe so. Do we have fuel in the center tanks today? I don't think we do. Oh, we do have fuel in center tanks. So the th center tank pumps can go on. Um. So all we have to do now is... Get engine 2 spooling up, which won't happen because I forgot to turn off the packs. Uh, packs to... Off, off. Now we can get engine 2 spooling up. There we go. Wait for 25% N1, or N2, even. 
There we go. Okay, that's all set to go. Twenty, that's okay. So we got good start. We just want to wait for it to stabilize here. Twenty, sixty, call that good. And start engine one. Okay, perfect. Three, twenty-four, twenty-five percent and two, there we go. Powered engine one. Auto brake to RTO. And turn on the taxi lights. Um I'll hold off on that actually. And engine one is started, perfect. We can Get the APU gens on. Or get that off the bus. Turn off the APU bleed. And turn off the APU. Right. Just set flaps five. And we just need to wait for the flaps to come in. And we can actually start taxiing straight out. So you're gonna set the speed the oh crap <laughs> accidentally uh well now I know that the uh takeoff config's okay. That was entirely my bad. There we go. This is an old scenery, by the way. This is for <laughs> Explain 10. <coughs> but it works, so... That's all that really matters. Bravo Taxiway, there's Echo ahead of us. There's just signs for runways 3, 6, and 1, 8, which I guess makes sense. go. Sounds are awful quiet. There we go. I might regret that decision, but we'll continue. In fact, uh, let's pause the music. Um, do audio features. Nope. Audio volumes. Do I have a cold? No, it's just the mic's really close to me. Sorry, Captain Olaf. Um, I do have a breathing heavily while I'm... Hang on. Yeah. While I'm concentrating. Um, also, I do have a persistently blocked nose, so that doesn't help. Right. 
This is a lot longer of a taxi than I actually expected. There's the military apron off to the uh, left there with... Okay, that helicopter isn't floating. I thought it was for a second. Only the finest Yemeni military equipment, which is all old Russian equipment. <laughs> that may actually be true. Oh, yeah, that's a MiG. Yeah. Okay. I'll just deal with the fact that everything is uh, inexplicably Russian. Uh oh. What did I knock? Nothing that couldn't be knocked. Good. The comedy is my microphone so sensitive that I, I'm not actually like audibly breathing most of the time. It's just like it's picking up on it anyway. Right. This is a twenty knot taxi. This does not feel like I'm traveling at twenty knots. Let's get set up here. Um, actually, terrain is more of a concern than weather. Um, I'll set that to T-A-R-A. That's all set. Wonderful. Let's get our landing lights on. Turn off the taxiway light. Engines to continuous strobe on. We can enter the runway because we're not on Vatsim and nobody really cares if you're offline. Also, if the airport was this empty in real life, you would just get cleared straight onto the runway because there's no traffic inbound. Approaching three, six. Okay. Let's get lined up. We're identified on the correct runway. Let's see how I did on this lineup. On runway three six. Surprisingly well. Let's get the timer going. Hey, Massey. Things are good. How are things with you? Forty percent N one. And up to takeoff power. Let's get Cedric back up on the runway. Eighty, 80 knots. knots. I get the feeling a 22 KD rate was maybe a bit much. Oh boy. We're well past V1 here. Come on. V1. V1. Rotate. Caution. On taxiway. On taxiway. We had a slight uh, tail strike there, I think. Four hundred. Thousand to go. One thousand. Let's get this up to three five thousand feet. Uh, and if memory serves, transition level here or transition altitude is uh, thirteen thousand feet. I can bring this up to flaps one.
No slash two five swan. Hey, Eddie Boo. And flaps up. Trim the plane out a bit. I am hand flying this, by the way. How far am I doing? It's doing okay. I'm gonna hand fly this plane for a bit longer than I usually do because usually by now the uh, the autopilot's already on. But what I can do is turn off these. Engines to auto. About 10,000, so let's get the turnoffs off. Probably the next game, maybe they'll make some big boy improvements, like gameplay with next year. That's what I'm hoping. That's, uh, I think, what the community in general are hoping uh, happens to Farm Sim is with the extra year they have to work on it, that there will be some extra improvements made. I don't know if it's that I'm getting better at controlling this thing, or that I'm just doing it slowly for once, but uh, this is hand flying pretty well. I am running the latest version of Zebo Mod, by the way. Uh, the latest, like, patch and hotfix and stuff. Won't be long till I'm back in Europe again? No, not really. Um, this is the longest leg in a while, or longest sector in a while, so it's anticipated to be about two and a half hours. Um, according to some digging I did over the weekend, so about two and a half hours this leg. Uh, there's transition. So it's standard. And, uh, then it'll be, like, next week is likely to be some quick fire hops. Let's get the autopilot on. It didn't actually make any changes. Okay, that, I'm kind of impressed by how I did it. The logo light can come off now. And, uh, we can release the passengers. So, let's have a look at our progress page. It's anticipating, uh, oh, this is the pro progress page. Um, it's anticipating we'll be arriving at 12.45 Zulu. Itoli is our first point. Where is Itoli? So we're about 40 miles out from Itoli at 10.32 Zulu, or with an ETA of 10.32 Zulu. So we're looking at about, yeah. About two and a quarter hours from uh, uh, Italy onwards. Your offers back from uni the day you sent off your statement. Nice. That should actually be set to auto. Um, pressurization is going good. Duct pressure is getting a touch high, but that's fine. And everything is going nicely indeed. Uh, Zulu is GMT. Yes, uh, I do. Have, I am running fake time at the moment. I'm not running on real time because if I was running real time, it would be night time. Um. Once I get back into Europe, uh, it's likely I'll swap to real time again. But just because it's a couple hours ahead and we're still kind of in winterish um, and very early uh, nightfall, um, especially in areas where I'm actually ahead of GMT, uh, like here in the Arabian Peninsula, it's actually not worth me putting the game onto real time because you just have me flying at night all the time. 
Which I prefer myself, but I don't think you guys would prefer that. Um, so in terms of where we are, if I bring up the map... We have just left Sana here. And we are flying the entire length of the Arabian Peninsula up to Muscat. Over... Ooh. Over here. Um, somewhere. I've lost it. But it is, like, in this point here, so... We are flying the length of it today. From here to here. Uh, pretty much coast to coast. Couple hours. And then next week we'll be just doing some rapid fire hops. Um, along the coast here. I actually forgot to start the flight leg. Whoops. But, uh, let's get a bit quick flyby going. Hopefully this won't be hellaciously loud. This wasn't too bad. As we continue climbing on up. This is, uh... It's not default scenery, but it is like a texture pack that I installed on top of the default scenery so you can see that it it, it does have a bit of a checkerboard going. Um, it's an improvement though. Uh, and I am using a new preset for my X-Vision that Mr. Matt XGS made up and it is very pretty indeed. Uh, so that's very nice. Aiden Bateman, thank you very much for uh, hitting the also button on YouTube. Welcome along, hope you enjoy uh, Chilling out here in the chill flights and stream that is always on a Wednesday. Or is now always on a Wednesday. Every other day is farm sim and a bit of chaotic, but Wednesdays are, are my day to chill. Um, because I really love flight sims. <laughs> and uh, to be honest, there's not a whole lot that I can do in cruise. See you, Massey. Um, there's not there's not a whole lot I can do during you know the the cruise phase of flights so um, we'll hit top of climb and uh, that's gonna be it for a while I mean I could do some landing I hit the wrong button there um, I could do like some landing calculations but I. Whoops. I don't see the point in doing that just now, because we're still two hours away from um, even top of descent. Uh, we do have a slight bit of wind going here. It's, it's comical. I've been watching streams of guys flying through uh, storms. It was Akira and Dennis. And always been like 97 knots of crosswind and planes flying at 45 degrees. And here, here we are in the uh, Arabian Peninsula with a 19 knot tailwind. Um, which is very nice indeed. I'd actually prefer like 190 knots of tailwind, but 19 I can deal with. We are approaching top of climb now. This plane is heavy. Oh, I kind of regret putting the extra fuel on board, because we are flying heavy today. It won't matter once we're up to cruise, but getting there is a bit of a pain. Um, what's our cruising speed going to be? Points, no. No, 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 no. 0.74. 0.74. Execute. Climb speed. If our target speed on climb is 0 0.77... I mean, I see no reason why not. 
Uh, cruise. 0.77. Our max is 359. Our, our optimal is 359. So we're actually close to our optimal, uh, Cruising altitude. We can't choose three, 360 because that's uh, going in the wrong. That's a, a in real. Uh, I'll get there eventually. Real world, that'll be going in the wrong direction. Um, if you're flying east to west, you could choose odd. No, if you're flying east, you choose odd numbers. If you're flying from the east, you choose even. Um, so if you're flying to the east, you choose an odd-numbered uh, flight level. If you're flying to the west, it's an even-numbered flight level. I don't know why. Because east even would have been a much... would have been a really good monomic, but no, it's the other way around. Um, just set that to there. And yeah, we're good for quite a while here. Um, 12.46 Zulu. Yeah, we hit Itoli at 10.32. Expecting Megpa at 10.41 and expecting um, Muscat at 12.46 at the very earliest. And we're 38 miles, 41 miles from top of climb. That's for, why are we getting farther and farther away from top of climb? <laughs> Is it because I actually changed the uh, the cruise speed to Mach 0.74 and now the plane is very unhappy? That was because we got a 25 knot tailwind. Welcome back, Elliot. Yeah, the plane is very unhappy on this climb for some reason. Because like, we're alternating between 700 and 1,200 feet per minute to climb. Uh, well above any terrain. Nearest terrain is at 4,500 feet. We're 29,800 and climbing still. Um, so that's not a concern. This tailwind's doing us a number, I think. It's going to be good once we get to cruise, because we'll be pushed along even faster. Like, as it is, we've got a ground speed of 478 knots. Um, is it actually... ah... Yeah, that's the problem. Um... 270. Execute. And we will shoot up a bit, and then we'll have a target mark of 0.74. Hello, Alex. How's it going? Yeah, we're going up at 3,000 feet per minute now that I've lowered the uh, climb speed. Okay. You're not a nine-year-old. At my on roadblocks. What? That doesn't make sense. We're actually at 100% in one. That's probably not a good idea. But if the plane says we can do it, we can do it. We're now 14 miles. Oh, 18 miles. Oh, 21 miles. From top of descent, or top of climb, 19 miles. Nine year old army, that makes a bit more sense. I'm guessing autocorrect had a part to play there. Once we get to top of descent, we should be good. Because we're already at what will be our cruising speed of Mach 0.74. Um, there's our cruise speed, isn't it? Oh no, our cruise speed is Mach 77. Um, well, let's target, uh, no, we'll keep it at 0.74 and we can accelerate 
once we have uh, reached cruise. Apparently we've lost the ability to type the last few weeks. I mean, old age does strange things to people. This is a thing that happens. See, Aaron? In enjoy work, I guess, maybe? Um, oh boy, we've still got a long flight ahead of us. We've been in the air now for 20 minutes, nearly. And we've only made it this far. But all of this has been climbing. Um, we are just about to reach 35,000 feet. Flight level 350. So we will actually accelerate once we get there. Um, thousand to go. There we go, there's a thousand to go. I mean, we're already at 460 knots ground speed, which is impressive. Um, in a 737. Not so impressive in a 74 or like a Concorde or something, but for a 73, that's not bad. It's just a case of uh, coaxing the plane to continue to climb for another 400 feet. Once we get that extra 400 feet, 300 feet, then we'll accelerate to Mach 0.77. I'm hoping it can do Mach 0.77. We're now in cruise mode. Oh, we can totally do... Can we do 0.8? This is silly. Execute. Oh, we can do 0.8. We'll, we'll cruise in Mach 0.8. <laughs> There's no reason not to cruise a Mach 0.8. <laughs> oh, actually, there is, because that's actually just at the edge of the envelope. Uh, points... oops. Um, let's try 0.78. And execute that. Yeah, 0.78 is... is... safe. Um, these orange lines mean that you sh really shouldn't be in there. The red is you definitely shouldn't be in there. Hello, Simulator Gaming. Let's do cruise checks here. Everything is looking good there. Yep, everything's good there. And there. And down there. Fantastic. So we're going to cruise now at uh, 0 0.78, Mach 0.78. What's the FPS like with the preset? Um, pretty good. Considering, like, it's really ultra clear weather today, and that tends to drop FPS a bit. Uh, pretty good. That was the wrong button. So, we'll be in Muscat in about two hours. There, thereabouts. Am I using a joystick? Um, I'm not doing any flying right now, Thomas, but yes. <laughs> uh, right now, it's it's all autopilot. Everything's automated, because even in real life, you don't actually want to try and... Um, you know, even the best pilots don't want to try and actually pilot a plane at this kind of altitude. I have seen, I have seen somebody in a 747 uh, fixed base simulator, like a real world 747 pilot, actually fly, uh, hand fly at 35,000 feet, um, <laughs> which was impressive. But to be fair, that guy was actually, you know. Formerly the training captain for British Airways on the 747. So he kind of knew the plane pretty well. You, you know, you, he was one of the most senior pilots with British Airways um, at one point. He retired since. But uh, you'd expect people like that to be able to <laughs> fly a 747 at 
Well, you wouldn't expect. You'd, you'd, you'd accept that people, the people with um, that much experience can have fly 747 at silly altitudes. Because um, the air is so thin, and, you know, the airspeed is so high that um, any little input is going to have a very large effect. So you don't want a human even trying, for the most part. Uh, we are going 484 knots along the ground, which is very nice indeed. That's probably going to have an effect in our ETA. Yeah, we've already gained a minute, but that's going to... We're going to lose about 10 minutes once we put in the arrival in, you know, 600 nautical miles time. Um, and... Um, it's gonna it's gonna be a fairly long trip because I mean the range I've got the uh, flight display there is 360 nautical miles and unfortunately there's you know not a lot to see at the window unless you like the color brown or yellow or orange or whatever color you want to describe that as unless unless you like the color desert there's not a whole lot of visuals going on. Um, as we make our way across the bottom of the Arabian Peninsula. Um, by way of referencing our flight plan, we are here. We're just in between these two points. Um, took off from Sana'a here, and we're quite a distance away from Muscat, which is off up here. Here's our arrival, by the way. Um, which is, that's not going to tack on too many track miles, actually. Um, that's our currently planned arrival. The weather might change in Muscat in the meantime. Uh, yes, thank you, SG. I'm aware that it's 18.05 Zulu. Um, yeah, this is just going to be cruising over desert for quite a while. Um, fortunately or unfortunately. Well, we are flying with, come on, with Oman Air today. And uh, they hope that you take your seat and be very well behaved. <laughs> um, all 160 people I threw on the plane, plus, like, some cargo as well. Um, I do like how Zebo locks all the doors mid flight. That's a nice little detail. Cabin lighting. Bright, bright. All of the all of the bright. Uh, do you have to pay monthly for Navigraph? Yes and no. You can get like an annual subscription, but I do pay monthly. On Google Maps it says it would take 449 hours to walk between the two airports. I'm not too surprised there. <laughs> it is 900 nautical miles, which is... Uh... Actually tells me not... So, uh, nine, eight, six. Uh, 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 uh. It's eleven hundred miles on the ground, um, which is what seventeen hundred and say eighteen hundred kilometers, one thousand eight hundred kilometers. Um, yeah, that's quite a distance to walk. Be quite a distance to drive too. It'll probably take over twenty-four hours to drive that. Um, unless you're speeding. I mean, I, I actually I don't know what the speed limits are in Yemen and Oman. Believe it or not, I know it might come as a shock, but I don't know what the speed limits actually are on. The roads in between <laughs> Sana International Airport and Muscat International Airport. 28 hours drive, yeah, just over a day. And that's driving constantly. You'd probably actually break that up into two 14 hour days uh, um, in real life, you know, for sanity's sake. Unless you had, like, an RV and several people who wanted to take shifts driving, you might be able to get it down to, what, 35 hours or so? 
assuming you had all the food that you needed for three days, <laughs> two and a half, three days, um, in the RV to begin with, and everybody took turns driving back to back to back to back to back and sleeping back to back to back and eating. You couldn't all eat at once. <laughs> You could probably do that in 35, 36 hours, if you really pushed it. Because it would take like a few minutes every time to do a driver swap, and you'd need to do... You'd want to do that like every hour or so, if you're on particularly boring roads. Yeah, there's, there's not even terrain <laughs> below us at this point. Um, he says you need to stop to swap drivers. I mean, it's a good idea, Foxtrot. <laughs> um, yeah, we're basically, like, we're going to come over a little reach here in a little bit, but we're basically along flatlands for the rest, almost the rest of the journey. The next mountains we'll see will actually be in Muscat. Oh boy. Hope you guys like flat, featureless landscapes. Because we're gonna. Oh! Ooh, ooh, ooh! Features! Look! Ooh! Uh oh. I zoomed in too far and I don't know what I'm looking at. I'm looking at a door. Features on the landscape. Uh, when we get to Abu Dhabi next week, I do have a bit of ortho for that. Um, that was going to be like an, a bonus flight if I figured I might have time, but yeah, looking at the ETA and all that, that's not going to happen today. Uh, <laughs> which is a good thing, because I can then spend uh, some of Saturday, a couple of hours on Saturday, um, just getting... Uh, more scenery together for uh, the other airports I'm stopping at in the area, which are because it's gonna be fairly quick fire. Uh, like from Muscat, we're flying to Abu Dhabi, which is only 300 k's. Uh, from Abu Dhabi to Qatar is 200 miles exactly, 320 k's. Uh, Qatar to Bahrain is like 100 and something k's, I think. 150 k's. Bahrain to Q8 is 400. So next week we might do three flights. We might go Muscat, Abu Dhabi, uh, Qatar, Bahrain, and then do Q8 and maybe Baghdad back to back uh, the week after. Which is totally a plan what we could do. What's it saying my ETA here is. Sim Zulu, or Real Zulu 1811. Yeah, ETA in real time is uh, 7.42, so we got about, about another hour and a half to go. And what I'm going to do in a second is just turn off the web. I'm actually going to do that now. I'm going to turn off the webcam. That was the wrong button. Trap up camp, and I'm gonna go AFK for a few minutes and leave you with some outside shots of the plane. Uh, and I will. Come on. I will turn X plane down a bit. And pretzel up. So I'll be back in a few minutes.
And I'm back. Hello, Henry and CD. If you guys are still here. Uh, apologies for that, I just need to run AFK for a couple of minutes. To get something done. Explain can now get louder again. Pretzel can get quieter again. Been gone for seven minutes. I, yeah, I'm back now. <laughs> Not everything takes like two seconds. Uh, we have gained a minute on our ETA, actually. Since I left, I should not have run back up the stairs, good lord. Um, got myself some grub? No, I had to go do something else. Um, how's the center tank looking? 2.5, fantastic. Just had to sort something downstairs and uh, took a small bit longer than I was expecting. Get rid of the EFB for now. Uh, oh, we've got coffee. How far did I run? Upstairs, which <laughs> it is not that far, but with the amount of weight that I'm carrying, quite a lot of uh, effort to get there. Uh, our left tank. Oh yeah, because the yeah, no, that makes sense. Uh, the left wing tank is ten kilos lighter than the right wing tank, and that actually makes sense because the APU runs off this tank. In fact, the APU runs off a uh, fuel pump or the aft fuel pump on the left. So you can 17 stone. I am um, I don't know what it is in stone. 125 kilo. Uh which is too much. It's far too much. So I'm uh, actively trying to run up <laughs> up the stairs a bit more to um burn more calories and like lose a bit of weight. 125 kilos, yeah. That's what I was in November, was it? When did I? Yeah, November, towards the tail end of November. The, 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 the wonderful situation where you have to wonder which time... 20 stone, oh god. <laughs> yeah. Um, I hopefully weigh less than that now. But that's what I weighed towards the tail end of November when um, I had all of my... When I had like the, the month of just being constantly ill. Four eighty-eight long ground, 46 knot tailwind, 17.6, yeah. It's, it's not fun. <laughs> Nah, I need to, like, do exercise and stuff and lose weight. I do the same thing, Henry. I keep saying, oh, I'll no, do, do some exercise today, and then I just, like, sit down and start. To be fair, like, I, I complain about this. I sat down and did work today <laughs> instead of doing exercise. I'm, I'm probably more productive avoiding exercise than I ever would be doing it. Um, I'm half tempted to boost this up to Mach 0.8. Let's do it. Uh, cruise. 0.8. Let's -a go! Just save the extra probably three minutes. Getting your tea out of the oven. Very nice, Henry. Hmm. 
Hmm, I wonder where Tibet is. <laughs> I wonder where Mount Everest might be. Uh, by the way, Lukla is going to be one of the stops on the tour, which I haven't actually decided how to fly into Lukla yet. Um, it's a while off, and it might not even be that I fly into Lukla on X-Plane. Spoiler alert, uh, I will be transitioning over, over a little while, because um, there is a bit of a limited aircraft choice. I'll be transitioning over to uh, Flight Sim 2020 once it's out. Or streamable. <laughs> One of the two. Whichever happens first. Out or, like, out to stream. Um, I will be transitioning over because it looks so pretty. Um, so there might be some Airbus spam and some... Because uh, there is an A320 in it and there's a 748 in it. Um, and I, there's also like a Citation jet, people have assured me. Um, so I will, I will be flying those once uh, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is out. Hopefully towards the tail end of this year. But like everybody's saying, oh, Flight Sim 2020. Um, there's no actual release date yet. So it might be that it comes out in 2021, but the anticipation is it'll come out at some point this year and likely be on the Series X box, Series X box, Series X box, Series X box. Um, as, if not a launch title, some sometime very soon afterwards. To show off what Next Gen can really do. And if you've seen any of the pictures of uh, the new Microsoft Flight Sim, you might have an idea of what Next Gen can really do already. Because it is very impressive. Uh, to the point where I've had to point out to Landy that some of the pictures of it weren't actually real pictures. They were just screenshots. Because <laughs> uh, he, he, it, it's easy to get confused because there's no tiling of desert terrains in the screenshots. And everything looks so real. And the lighting is actually about as good as this. In the screenshots, generally, like, explain lighting is is pretty on point. We have. 600 miles to go. 105 nautical miles to Impasse. That's a sixth of the journey remaining right there. Um, and about a quarter of it just to get to Sable. So that's about a quarter of the journey remaining right there. So if I zoom out even more. Yeah, we can see Top of Descent. <laughs> There's Top of Descent right there. Uh, four hundred and eighty miles away. As the crow flies, you can see there's a bit of a a swoop going on here, so it's probably closer to six hundred miles. Double sent five hundred and sixteen miles. And uh, it is looking like we're reaching the edge of the desert area, at least. Um, but we might still have quite a bit of brown to go. Let me read Discord while, while we cruise.
There's not a whole lot, unfortunately, that I can talk about during, like, an epically long cruise. Um, other than, you know, the 737... Actually, I can talk about this. It, uh... Yeah. Came out today that the 737 MAX... Uh, has more problems. Again. Because... Somehow... Some way, somewhere, debris got into the wing tanks, the fuel tanks, uh, the wing fuel tanks of 737 Maxes that were fully assembled and in storage. And, um, you know, some people are saying, oh, it's the outside companies being outsourced that are doing shoddy workmanship and trying to make Boeing look bad, and my response to that is, well, even if that's the case, Boeing should inspect the parts as they arrive, and make sure there isn't foreign object debris in the fuel tanks of the planes they're building. As you know, they're building the planes, not afterwards while they're sitting in storage, and they would have otherwise been delivered, so there could have been even more crashes the 737 MAX caused by foreign object debris that Boeing missed. <laughs> it's, uh... Embarrassing and frustrating and infuriating in a way that Boeing are... It just looks so inept right now. Like, the, the 737 MAX had hardware is or software issues, and then more software issues they found after the MCAS issue, they found more software issues, then they found even more. Then they found a, hard, a couple of hardware issues, and now they found foreign object debris in the wing tanks. And the 777 MAX had problems getting to the first flight test, never mind actually getting off the ground. Um, there were problems getting to the flight test, the getting off the ground on the first day. That was joked about, but I mean... It's the first flight of a new aircraft type, so it's going to be under a lot of very strict conditions. Um, but, like, away from planes and Boeing's other business, the, the, the space business, they're... Uh, I forgot the name of it. Starliner. The, the space capsule. That's been grounded, too, because they found... A problem when they launched it where hey there's a timing issue on launch we might need to look into that while the spacecraft is up there and uh, they got it back down to the ground perfectly fine and all that and in the post in the briefing they did with NASA afterwards where they were explaining what went wrong with the timing issue they unintentionally revealed there was a second issue but they intentionally revealed there was a second issue and they said uh, something along the lines of hey there was a, actually a second issue we found with the Starliner uh, while it was in flight, but we, we fixed it in flight. And what the heck is that black spot? Oh, I stabbed myself with something. That doesn't look right. Um, they said, oh, we, we fixed another issue in flight. NASA said, you didn't tell us about the second issue. What was the second issue? The second issue was that the... Uh, I keep forgetting the name of the seg segment. The um, support module, big old trunk at the back of the bottom of the, the aircraft or the the, the, the capsule. Uh, when they detach that on after after trying to after burning for uh, re-entry, it's supposed to do a series of booster firings that move it away from the capsule. What Boeing found was that. It wasn't going to do those firings in the correct order. And instead of moving away to the capsule, it would have moved towards it at speed. Aimed squarely at the heat shield, which is necessary um, for man flights for people to survive. 
And NASA said, well, okay, thanks for telling us about this, albeit a bit late. Uh, what we're going to do is we're not going to let you go anywhere <laughs> near a manned flight just yet. You guys do some testing and make sure that will never, ever, ever happen in a real flight situation. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to ban you from the space station until such a time. <laughs> And we're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna put anybody in in your capsule until such time as we're satisfied that it's not going to kill them on re-entry because you've broken the heat shield with the service module. Ever password chest stuff inside like tortellini, tortelloni? Yes, I love them. I might have some tomorrow. There are some downstairs in the fridge. Hmm. That'd be a nice uh, bit of food. Uh, maybe breakfast-ish kind of thing. Hello, George's FS videos. You're new. Well, welcome. Uh, hope you enjoy farm sim and flight sim and random junk in between when I get bored. <laughs> we are on our way from Sana International Airport in Yemen to Muscat International Airport in Oman. We are uh, just approaching half halfway. Very in really. Yeah, forty three percent of the way there. Um, slightly less, actually. But we're, we're coming up on halfway in the journey. Um, Five hundred nautical miles to go of a nine hundred thirty two nautical mile as the crow flies flight. The actual track mileage is uh, 986 nautical miles. So, a bit longer. What FPS am I getting? Uh, 25 to 30. 20 to 30 FPS. <laughs> With the occasional dip below 20. X-Plane is insane for just eating FPS. Um, Vulcan can't come fast enough. Like straight up. We are actually approaching the edge of the desert now. Starting to see more brown than yellow on the, uh, the map here. And a bit more green towards the edge of it. So we should start seeing some greenery. Other than these mysterious... Oh, that's supposed to be a town, okay. It's my favourite drink, water. Or a good cup of tea. Or a cappuccino, depending on time of day. Um, but a good strong cup of tea, that'll do me any time of day. First drink, um, petrol. <laughs> Any anything that is not actually, you know, supposed to be consumed by a human is the worst drink. Like I'm, I'm not too fussy with things. What I drink, I don't like orange juice. I'm actually, I'm not actually a big fan of orange juice and. Uh, Stuff that's technically healthy, but I just don't like the citrusy taste. Dr. Pepper? Oh god, no, not Dr. Oh god. Okay, Dr. Pepper is one of the worst. Because I just... No. It's just, it's just not nice. Water has no taste. Yeah! That's why it's one of the best.
We drink like 40 years of Pepsi Max a day. If, Henry, if you cut down Pepsi Max and swap it with water, which, granted, has no taste, but therefore you can't not like the taste, um, it's actually a really good way of losing weight. Because, um, like, water has no calories. It's not gonna screw over your teeth. There's no ingredients in water, uh, especially bottled water. So why not? It has no fat or sugar. Neither does water. And the problem with Pepsi Max, actually any sugar-free drink, isn't that it has fat or sugar. Or, like, no fat or no sugar. It's actually that it has the artificial sweeteners. They are incredibly bad for you. In, um, high amounts. Uh, which, four liters of Pepsi Max would have quite a high amount of artificial sweeteners. Uh, particularly aspartame, which Pepsi Max does have. Uh, is not good for you at all. Um. Because as nice as Pepsi Max is, and I do like Pepsi Max... Not very, very healthy. As a drink, can I start seeing? Oh, we're less than five hundred miles away from top of the now. Sometimes one bottle, which two, they're most for. I used to drink that much, and it's or uh, that much Diet Coke, and it's it's just not good for you. Like, I feel, I feel much better in general. Oh, good lord. I just noticed we're going over 500 knots along the ground now. Does Tesco Fizz of all try a Pepsi Max when it's on sale? Uh, you do you, but I just couldn't do that anymore. Um, I literally, like, every few days... Go downstairs and say to my brother, hey, could you get another like five liter drum of water? Because I'm running out again. Because the tap water here tastes weird. And, uh. Bottled water tends to have f fewer, like, issues in general. Because sometimes we have an issue here where, um,. They overfluorinate the water and it turns white. And, uh, it's pretty hard water here. Is it hard water? No. No, it's a soft water area we're in. Um. But I don't know, there's something about the water that just doesn't taste right. Hey, 1174. Iron brew for the win. I never tried iron brew. True fact. We are now at an ETA of uh, 1940 Zulus, so just under an hour. Uh, apparently, we've got about 57 uh, minutes to go here, but this time has only moved by a minute. You've cloudy water sometimes. Yeah, that's not fun at all. Um, what I'm going to do is about 100 miles from top of descent, so in about 200 nautical miles time. Uh, I'm going to start working on figuring out an arrival and stuff, and getting arrival details. Got any green grass yet? Uh, it's still desert. Still desert. Yeah, it's going to be desert for actually quite a while yet. Um, probably another 5-10 minutes or so and then we'll, we might see, start seeing some grass. But, uh... Until then, yeah, it's desert as far as I can see. Um, 
Um, any b bad weather on route? Uh, let me check. Uh, locked aircraft. There's some wind. Um, oh, according to this map, it's actually all desert all the way. So we shouldn't be seeing any grass. Uh, yeah, no, there's a bit of wind. So slightly low visibility over, I think that's Muscat area. Yeah, slightly lower visibility over Muscat, uh, less than four, uh, four, between four and five nautical miles visibility in Muscat. Uh, eight kilometers. Eight kilometers visibility in Muscat, that's no concern. Um, no rain, no clouds, apparently, no, no, nothing really. Uh, precipitation. Let's go with Echo Tops and see if anything shows up there. Nope. Nada. Wind three five zero. Um, yeah, there is like no weather between here and Muscat. There's some clouds and um, a bit of radar activity up towards Iraq, but nothing, nothing this far south or. East. Oh, just to, in a way, prove this is realistic. Or real weather. Uh, if I zoom in on Ireland, it's... Yeah, visibility is a bit low, and it is uh, extremely cloudy. I think that's the... Yeah. And there's a lot of rain. In the UK, it's also very cloudy with a lot of rain. And over the Isle of Man, it's gone mental. No, no, it's not the Isle of Man. North Wales, actually, it's gone mental. So bring this down to the Arabian Peninsula again. And zoom in on. What the hell? Sigma. Thunderstorms forecast between 30 north to 25 north and 70 east to 75 east. Moving east. Uh, Lahore, if I are. Isolated thunderstorms forecast. That's effectively the same Sigma, it's just that. Oh, wait, no. OPLR. Yeah. Um, it's the same Sigma. It's just that uh, it's two different reporting areas. There. Can I go on England and Suffolk? I don't know English geography that well, Henry. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I don't know where things are in England. 350 nautical miles to top of the scent. Unfortunately, the ETA is going to be a bit weird because of the uh, bizarre little hook we're doing now. Because we are, we are, not, we, uh, we are now in this hook. Um, I'm not quite, we are now in the hook that's taking us along. I see why it's there now. It's actually there to take us along the border of Oman uh, so that we don't enter. If I bring up the high on route. Yeah. It's keeping us in the Muscat FIR or the Muscat Air Traffic Control region and it's making sure we don't go into uh, 
the Jetta one, just so that we... It reduces the, the number of air traffic control reason, regions we go through, and actually stops us from passing through through one briefly. Um, are we doing another flight later? Maybe, ooh. Okay, what died just then? Um, maybe off camera, but not on stream. Need to bring Navigraph charts back up. That was odd. And uh, Pretzel died too. Oh, Pretzel died hard. Wow. Pretzel, come back. Um, I need to load this flight. There we go. That was weird. What caused that? I'm going to guess it was something to do with the fact that I've got so many tabs on <laughs> open on uh, Firefox here, so just bear with me a second while I uh, spam close some stuff. I can go, I don't need a Wikipedia page about the Wild Thornberries open. Don't need that open. Don't need that open. That should be better. Um, I just want to do a fuel check here. Uh, Novno. Predicting... Estimated fuel on board of... 5.8, we'll have 8.2. Fantastic, we're... You use Google Chrome. Google Chrome has a bad habit of eating all of the RAM. Um, I could use Chrome, but it, it just eats all of the RAM, which isn't great for uh, when I'm doing explain stuff. So I choose, I choose not to use Chrome, um, just effectively for my own sanity. And, uh... Yeah, 507 knots on the ground in a 737. That's actually quite impressive. Uh... Granted, I am doing a, a fast cruise. So there are a couple of clouds over there. Do you want to look at... Oh, that's a nice cloud texture. Um, yeah, I am going to be looking at some random junk throughout, like, when I start seeing stuff, because, uh, this is my first time using this X-Vision preset, and I just want to see how everything looks. Weather radar is showing zip, zip, zero, zilch. The same jumper on as you, Lee Cooper. Yeah, because of... Uh, fun fact, I haven't bought a jumper in years. <laughs> My uh, sister and mother keep buying me Lee Cooper stuff. Because it's pretty cheap and like Primark or something are selling it now. So, I've got a lot of Lee Cooper clothes all of a sudden. Which I'm kind of fine with, because I look fashionable. <laughs> hey, here's some sports strike, get two for tenner. That might be where my sister gets them, actually. Because it's usually my sister, and she shops in sports strike all the time, so that might well be where she gets them. So it looks like the um, two and a half hour estimate for, uh, that I got last week is about correct, because we're at an hour 13 in, we got about 46 minutes to go as the crow flies. Uh, we won't be flying as the crow flies, unfortunately, we do have a couple of big turns coming. 
um, on the rest of the way. Like if I bring up the flight plan here. You know, we gotta, we're basically going to be curving into Muscat from where we are right now. Um, if you're flying as the crow flies, we're just going a straight line there. Um, so, I would guess I had another 15 minutes on due to the curve minimum, so... We're looking at we're looking at about two hours minimum flight. Going of passengers, 160. I filled the plane up uh, completely, but it is in it is in a 160 passenger configuration, which I don't know if that's going to show up as different seating configuration. Oh, explain. Oh, it is. That's actually quite cool. Also, oh my god, the 70s style of these seats. They're horrible. Where's the click spot? There, there, there it is. I just noticed that our heading bug is slightly off. There we go. So this 60 um, knot wind is both pushing us along and it is pushing us slightly off uh, to the right. We're about 5 degrees off. Can't see any people or any staff. Yeah, because I've got that in visual effects. I can um, show them if I really want to. It might not appear full because they're just pre-baked in. Now there are passengers. Including the PewDiePie twins, for some reason. And this guy, who's just had an accident in his pants, by the looks of it. And Count Hoverhand. And Lord Claw. That better not be a woman. Why is there a female model on this plane? I specifically said all the passengers were men when I was taking off. Let's close the door. And I'm going to go auto for that now. What happens if I turn on flight director help? That does nothing. <laughs> yeah, those clouds are quite nice. Oh. <laughs> Something made the game unhappy. I'm gonna guess that was actually a weather reload happening. Um. 200. Uh, we'll start working on. Looking at, uh. Our descent here. So, we'll bring up Active Sky. F not flight plan. Conditions in. Muscat. Muscat, not that one. There we go. Can I make announcements on board? Yes. Uh, PA system. Level off. And that voice is of a real 737 captain. Uh, it's Flight Dick to Sim on YouTube who did the sound, the um, voices, and he is a 737 captain for an undisclosed airline. Um, so let's see. Let's try and do some landing performance. Uh, we'll be landing. It'll be a 2 6. Landing. What does the flight plan say we want to be landing on? Uh, eight left. No, we've got two six right. Assuming they they run like that. Uh, I wish I can check. 
Um, let's see what they're landing on in real life. When in doubt, flight radar 24. I'm assuming that I'll be able to actually see what's going on in Muscat. They will know, no, no, no. Over here in Muscat. It's got two runways, so I presume it'll still be open. Yes. Uh, Muscat, they are using 08. And they're using 08. Right to land. And taking off presumably zero eight. Also zero eight right. Why are they using the same runway for both? Is that zero eight? No, that's ah no, they're using two six right, so yeah, that is what they're currently landing at the moment. Um, it is dry, the wind is uh, 210 at 5, air temperature is 24, QNH 1013, the flap 30, um, um, brakes, auto brake 2, Auto versus no credit. Landing weight is going to be uh, performance. It's in here somewhere. Sixty nine point five, which is our current weight. We are burning fuel at approximately um, two point seven tons per hour. Got about an hour left, so it'll be uh, sixty nine. 0.5 minus 2.7 66 800 we'll say and we do have a landing performance here we could go auto break one we could totally go auto break one um so yeah that's auto break one for landing uh, 30 plus 5, yeah, that's fine, yeah, that's, oh, hang on, landing distance, available is 3874, we'll be landing in 2496, perfect, time to land, about an hour, uh, so if I do, this change the approach to two six right via Nanka. That looks about right. So let's have a look at the taxi chart here. Let's actually just get all the charts up real quick. Ah, uh, so they can pin them. Whatever real life time, yeah. So we'll be landing two six right here. Um. Yeah, it looks like we'll be getting off at about Yankee 4. Uh, which is perfect. And then we will... Taxi via Victor. Um, to, let's say, Uniform Charlie and... Uh, take the Tango Apron. Or one of the gates here. Possibly, actually, we'll go for one of the gates on Sierra. On the Sierra apron. Um, so we'll take gate uh, 104. Stand 104 will be good. Um, 
So let's have a look at the approach here real quick. We are going to be taking the... Uh, Radax 1 Uniform, which is coming in from Radax... Uh, doesn't give me any... So non I need to be between... Uh, flight level 100... Transition... Oh, no, between 10,000... 9 and 10,000 feet. Transition flight levels 150, that is... Perfect. Um, so, let me have a look through here. Um, so, descent. Forecast. Transition flight level is 150. Perfect. I must see how close I got with my landing weight of 66.8. Current land current cross weight is 69.4. Um, actually, if I program in, because it's not going to change in the next hour or so, our arrival uh, via the Radax, whatever it was, uh, it was the one uniform, wasn't it? Radax one uniform, yes. And then. Uh, two six right. Yeah, ILS two six right via uh, the non one uniform. Which I'm guessing is going to be in stars here somewhere. No. Maybe. Non one uniform R and transition, there we go. And we'll pin. Won't let me pin the non one uniform for some reason. There we go. So, the Nanka 1 uniform transition is going from Nanka to, uh... Mike 1 5 Echo Romeo. I think it's, um... Uh... And over the course of 10 miles, we gotta drop 4,500 feet. That's... 15. Hmm. That could get interesting. So let's execute that and just check legs to make sure that nothing is broken. Nope, that is perfect. So after Nanka, yeah, Nanka set of nine thousand. That's perfect. Uh, oh, it's forty-five hundred or above. And then Charlie Fox two six right, which is there. Okay. You're back, parked up waiting to be loaded. Very nice. You're not gonna probably see a whole hell of a lot, uh, Aaron, because this has been our view the entire time, is desert. I'll do a quick flyby just for funsies. Wow, you can see the crosswind there. <laughs> With the way that's crabbed. Um, yeah, our view basically this entire flight has been largely featureless desert, uh, which kind of sucks. Although these clouds are very pretty indeed. Hmm. Mr. XJS did a fantastic job at the uh, X Vision preset he sent me. Um. If I go auto brig one.
Yeah, because we're not actually going to be stopping there. ETA of landing, uh, I can tell you. Progress 11.50. 12.37, so in about 43 minutes, 4-3 minutes. There, thereabouts. Which would bring us up to 7.53-ish. Almost 8 o'clock. So, I will say, we will get stopped before 2,911 meters in, onto the runway. Um, this is our prediction, but it is giving no credit to reversers. There's no current way to give credit to reversers. Um, you go hold it yourself now. In, enjoy, Aaron. Um, so, we, we'll stop before 2.9 uh, 2 kilometers down the runway. Um, because I'll just crank the reverse. Get us uh, stopping up fairly quickly. Go to reverse normal. Uh, with auto brake one, it's gonna be good on the uh, the brakes. So our top of descent is in 180 183 nautical miles. It's not too too far away. Your top of descent is in uh, 20 minutes. There, thereabouts. Ah, I'm seeing a problem Im immediately with this turn we're about to take. We've currently got a slight tailwind. We're actually going to lose time. <laughs> We've currently got a slight tailwind behind us. It's mainly a crosswind at 64 knots. It's actually going to become a more or less complete crosswind with maybe a slight headwind element. Um, still at 64 knots when we make the turn, so that's less than ideal. So just watch... Uh, this arrow while I just uh, do that yeah look the arrow yeah, it's going dead crosswind and the turns now slowed down as well by the looks of it because we are Yeah, hoo, hoo, hoo. We're struggling against the wind. So there's more and more crab being put in, so uh, this is going to be quite interesting to see exactly how much crab we're, we're going to end up with. It looks like my guesstimate is about right. It looks like it's going to be about a 10 degree crab we'll be flying at. Um, ground conditions in Muscat 210 out of 5. That's fine. And I just want to set landing QH 1013. <laughs> um, I wasn't too far off. I was only off by like 1 or 2 degrees there on the. Assuming that's the end of the turn. It more or less is. We're not quite on magenta line yet, so. Yeah, we're, we're, we're offset by about 7 degrees uh, from our actual track, which is fun. 6 degrees even. And that's what a 60 knot crosswind will do. <laughs> uh, technically, we're above crosswind limits. If we were landing, I'd have to look at an alternate airport. Uh, that's not landable. Crosswind limit in a 737 is about 30 knots. Though I'd still give it a go because, I mean, it's a simulator. Um, we'll close the center fuel pumps now. They are, The center tank's basically empty. It's only got 170 kilos of fuel left. 
Which sounds like a lot, but in a plane it's not, because we got, you know, seven, eight tons of fuel left in the other two tanks. Um, what would happen in, out of curiosity, if I were to come in at flaps 40? What would that do to everything? 26, 8. I might come in at flaps 40, you know. Yeah, let's change the... Um, the approach to flaps 40 approach. Because then we, we'll land nice and short. And have room to float a bit, so... I think my guesstimate of the weight is wrong. Um, let's just put in the current weight, 689. Just see where you end up. Oh yeah, we're still totally fine like that, so... Yeah, flaps 40 and auto brake 1 will be perfect config for landing. Um... And our the approach will be 150. That's fine. Uh, 143 nautical miles now to top of descent. So why just do the next click? There's our top of descent. There, just under 160 miles away, uh, just before Radax. So, that is all sweet, all programmed in, and I kind of wish I... I'm in two minds, I kind of wish I put in, uh, generated and put in ortho, and at the same time, it's like, would ortho really have done anything? Because <laughs> it would just be a slightly different shade of desert. Um... There's an Etihad plane. Oh, that's going to Delhi. Yeah, they're totally landing 26 right, and for some reason also taking off 26 right. I would imagine. That at least some of them would take off 26 left. There's a. S what? A Swiss A330 has just come from Dubai into Muscat. What the heck? And, uh, and a man air 737 is actually landing there currently. Uh, an Air India A320 is about to take off. After doing the weirdest taxi route I ever did see. Oh, it had to do that taxi route. Okay. Eddie had to Abu Dhabi is preparing to leave. Uh, KLM are doing a flight from Muscat to Damam. Where is that? To Saudi Arabia, okay. But it's not a very long flight, so... Some of these aircraft choices make no sense because they're doing that in an A330. I wonder if these are just repositioning flights. Because otherwise it makes no sense whatsoever. Um, exactly how busy is Dubai Airport right now? I'm kind of glad that... Uh, I'm in two minds. I'm kind of glad that we're not hitting Dubai on the tour. I'm also kind of sad because Dubai is hilarious. Um, very busy indeed. There's a... An A380 inbound, followed by an A380. Uh, Followed by an A380, apparently they get their own flight path. Followed by a 777. Um, uh, 
Yeah, the next like three or four planes to land are all A three eighties. Wow. Any silly planes that don't make. I'm guessing that's an airport car that I'm looking at because it's just going randomly. Uh, A380 waiting to go. Airport car most likely. A380. 777. 777. 737. Uh, A330. A321. 767. Uh, A318. Impressive. Airport car, triple seven, A three twenty. There's very few small planes in Dubai at the moment. They're all long haul boys. In triple seven, your favorite plane apart from Concorde. Mine is most definitely the uh, the seven. Four, but I'm kind of partial to triple. I kind of prefer the 7.5 though over the triple. Just because the triple five is a, basically a pool noodle in plain form. It's it's kind of dumb looking. Um, like I I I want pencil plane. Got some settlements over there by the looks of it. I mean, we're still a hundred miles out. A oh, hundred miles exactly from uh, top of the scent. Since I can do that and still have top of the scent on the screen. Um, and top of the scent is in about uh, twelve minutes now. Arrival time is in thirty-six minutes. So we'll be landing just before 8 o'clock Irish time. Um, and just to give you an example of what would happen if I flew this real time, by the way. I'm going to delay by like 30 seconds here. While I just do this. This is what would happen if we were flying real time. Is instead of desert everywhere, you'd get black. Just the color black. Also, it turns out Matt's preset isn't very good at night. Wow, this... It has some questionable lighting going on. That said, if I were to uh, turn on the... where is the dome? The dome is up here. That's a bright dim. That's not as bad. Um, here is the New York near Glasgow Airport. Love watching the daily Emirates Triple Seven landing and taking off. Made the rest of the planes look like toys. Yeah. Uh, what happens if I bring this to 7.43? Now it's still night. <laughs> Let's just bring it to 6.33 local. That's still night. Uh, 5.56 local. That's incredibly pretty, and I'm going to take some green shots. I think we'll leave it at this kind of evening-y time. Um, because it's still about f 20 to 40 minutes before the sun sets there. Um, our first... Our first uh, high restriction is actually uh, 9,000 feet as we come in, so... 
Let's uh, set this down to 9,000 feet. And we'll get the PA queued up. Oh yeah, that's why I had the door open. Um, what I'll do is I'll change the lights. Cabin lighting, cruise, and white medium. Oh, hang on a second. The cruise lights are purple. Oh, that's amazing! Night sleep lights? What do they look like? Very light. Pr oh, that's pretty. I'm fine with that. Um, is there a PA I can do right now? Slightly over 30 minutes, but... 747 Virgin Atlantic, Thursday and Friday. Looked like they were sitting still on takeoff. The 74s are so... No, I haven't. And we haven't started to send yet. Um, the 74s just so, look so derpy when they're starting to take off. Because, like, they're so lethargic actually getting the acceleration going despite four engines, and then even when they do take off, they just kind of angle up and very slowly <laughs> just kind of sit off the ground. Um, they don't, you know, they don't go rocket mode like a 7.3 can. Um, although I am tempted for an upcoming flight. I don't know which one. Let me even look at the map real quick. Um, maybe the flight from Bahrain to Q8. Um, to sit on the brakes <laughs> until we actually reach takeoff thrust. Um, didn't get much work done. I can imagine. Um, I'm tempted to, uh, yes, yeah, sit, sit on the brakes until takeoff thrust is achieved on an upcoming flight because. I happen to know that causes ridiculous things to happen. I might even go flaps 15 and full toga, because... Um, I've heard of planes at Heathrow, Heathrow reaching altitude restrictions by the end of the runway doing this. Um, when are we hitting that kind of area? Oh, we've got a long ass way to go until there, okay. So we got, um... After day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Eight slash nine flights? Maybe ten, depending on how you want to count it, until we actually reach Europe. When we will be landing in Athens. Definitely the European continent, because Ankara is the capital of Turkey. And Istanbul, I believe their airport is on the European side of the river. Uh, uh, for some reason, Google Maps doesn't want to work correctly. I think Istanbul's airport is on the European side. Oh, there we go. Um. Yeah, Istanbul Airport is actually on the European side of the river, so if Istanbul was still the capital of Turkey, we would be landing in the European continent there. Um, well, there might be. There is, to be fair, also an airport on the Asian side of the river, okay. But I'd pick the European side just to get into Europe as a continent. But uh, no, we'll be landing at Ankara, which is on the Asian side of the Euphrates. Um... And then, uh, when we get to Cyprus, it, it really is up to you whether that's Europe or not. I had a direct line to the runway manager in case you had flocks of birds. They came out with the flare gun to chase them. Oh, flare gun. Now, I know in some airports, they just come out and start firing, like, 
shotgun blanks um, to shoo off the birds. Which is uh, an interesting idea for sure. We'll be landing, hopefully, in the dark. Is kind of the plan. Oh yeah, look at how low the sun is now. We'll be landing in darkness. Which I'm kind of fine with. Coming up to the top of descent now, just 31 nautical miles away, we have our descent, our stop descent altitude set. And uh, I can bring this back another notch. There's one bird strike, nearly shut the job down over it. Yeah, bird strikes are very serious business um, where, where planes are involved, because, like, it, a bird strike is highly unlikely to straight up take a plane down. Uh, the miracle on the, the Hudson was incredibly unfortunate in that situation in, in that case because I mean they did have a double engine failure due to bird strike um, but that almost never happens if there's a bird strike and it does take out an engine uh, there's usually the other engine is powerful enough to propel the jet and the jets already reached V2 which is safe speed for single engine ops um, you know, they're, they're usually safe to fly on one engine. Uh, granted, they won't be going anywhere, they'll be just be... If it's a heavy, uh, something like a 777 going to the US, or a 74 going to the US, they'll fly around, probably out to sea somewhere, or up high enough uh, over uh, an uninhabited area that they can just dump fuel, they'll land back down. If it's like a 737, 90% uh, of the time they'll just need to do like a small bit of holding if they're going a long flight. 90% of the time they can just come straight back to the airport and land. Um, that said, if it's a 7-4, uh, one engine down isn't the end of the world for sure. Because <laughs> you've got three others. Um, but in a, like a triple seven, uh, you'd dump, you'd do a fuel dump, you'd land, and you'd... Uh, the plane would go into maintenance uh, if there's a confirmed bird strike. Because that is serious, serious business. Now in diesel for descent. Uh, we should actually start automatically descending atop of descent here. Let's just see if that happens. Yes, the problem is. There we go. Now, if I turn down the exterior a bit. Right. Uh, 350, that's all set in. And basically, as soon as you start descending, I can technically transition over to... Actually, I can do it now, because... Um, it's 1013 in... Uh, QNH is 1013 in Moscow. It's actually 29091, not 29092. So it's slightly below, but it's fine. Uh, you're making a new road, you're disturbing so a bit... Ah, yeah. But I mean, bird strikes and bird activity is, uh... I won't say bird strikes are common, bird activity is definitely common at a lot of airports. So... Nine times out of ten they'll just activate their bird activity protocol, which is... Fire off gun of some description. Some airports have straight up shotguns that they just, uh... Fire blanks and try to make as much noise as humanly possible to scare off the birds. Right, there we go, we're descending now. So, now we can do the descent announcement properly. Hello again from the 
Yes, thank you for talking over me, lady. We'll try that again. Come down through 32,000 feet already. Uh, can't even see Muscat yet, which is kind of comical. Uh, Muscat is going to be on the left hand side of the plane, I believe. Yeah, Muscat's going to be over here. Oh, we can't see because there's mountains in the way. There we go. Now the announcement makes sense. So, how are we doing with this? 68.2. Right, let's get our landing with uh, 62. Not 682 tons, good lord, no. 68.2. Uh, 2732. That's actually really good. Oh, 3994. Just want to verify here. 3874. If I wanted to stop super fast, I could go auto, auto break max. Because, like, there's the touchdown zone. Of the runway. There's where we're stopping. If we translate that onto the airport here, which we can do actually really quite easily, uh, by. I'm just going to use 08 left as a reference here. Um, so we'll be landing here ish and stopping here ish. So going the other direction, it should be about Yankee for where we exit. Which is pretty much what I want to do. That's kind of the plan. So coming through 10,000 feet, we'll throw on the outboard lights. Um, we can actually throw on the logo light right now, just for funsies. Outboard lights will go on... Um, or the fixed lights... Will, no, the, the retractables will go on at 10,000 feet. Uh, we can extend them ready to go now. Fixed lights will go on uh, about the same time. I'll throw them all at 10,000. Uh, the turn-offs will go on when I pretend that we've been cleared to land. <laughs> so at some point on vinyl, I'll throw on the runway lights and the, uh, the taxi light. By the way, this lighting from the ground is the reason that I usually play X-Plane at night, because it's extremely pretty. Also, it's a bit less intensive on the uh, the FPS. I find that nighttime is better for FPS uh, in X-Plane. Because it's mainly <laughs> rendering black. Um, so you got... 206. Oh, the winds have changed in Muscat. We're going to continue on um, 26 right because I would imagine they're not going to do a runway change just because the winds have changed to be 8 knot crosswinds. Um, that's Dubai International that I'm looking at, Dave. Why were you looking? Oh, yeah, you were looking at all the silly heavies in Dubai. Um... So Muscat, they are still landing 2-6 right. That's perfect. In fact, Nomania 737 
Uh, 900 has just landed there, and a Spice Jet 737-800 is just currently landing there right now. Followed by an Amana Air 737-800. Uh, so we are going to the right runway for sure. Overlay is broke. How is overlay broke? How did overlay break that badly? Let me uh, see if I can fix this. I have kind of fixed. I've actually broken it more, haven't I? Uh, overlay. Load template. Open overlay. Yep. SG, you made me break it more. Why is it doing that now? Uh... Ah, I see what the problem is. Um... CSS... For... Transparent background color. I can fix this. Background opacity. Uh, is this... Okay, let's try... Inserting this code here. Paste. Boom! Fixed! No thanks to you, Simulator Gaming. You get. Hmm. Delicious roast chicken dinner. That D cell point right there is where we hit 10,000 feet. Could a game share X Men 11 with you? No. I don't understand game sharing and I don't do it. the uh, landing lights on a bit early here. I forgot I turned on the flashing. That could get interesting when we land. It's really easy. I don't care. I don't game share. I don't want to be told somebody else is playing a game that I bought, so I can't play the game that I bought. <laughs> if you want to get X Plane, then buy it. If you don't have the money, then save up. And frankly, if you want to get a flight sim 
wait until the end of the year anyway, because Microsoft are bringing out a new one. That looks like it's going to be a complete game changer, so. Impatience is a virtue. Hey, Sylvan. How's it going today, dude? We are approximately um, fourteen thirty one, fifteen twenty minutes out from touchdown now. And I'm quite happy with all of the landing figures that we have. We'll stop up in about two. Point seven kilometers. Airport should be somewhat visible off to the left there, but it's not at the moment. Yeah, that D-side is going to be about 10,000 feet. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, the lights look really pretty with this setup. Matt done good. Ever played Tower 3D? No, I haven't. Um, I'm going to be honest, I'm not all that interested in the ATC side of, <laughs> of aviation. I'm more interested in actually flying the planes. Um, like, I'm aware of what towers need to, to keep mindful of, but in terms of, um, actually doing that kind of stuff myself, and the tower 3D kind of stuff, that's just not for me. That's just not something that would interest me, um, all that much. Like, th this is the side of aviation that I like. Uh, where you've got a plane and you're flying it in between places for whatever reason you want to make up. D cells prepared for. Is it going to tell me I need. It's oh no. It's quite addictive, not worth 35. That's kind of the thing, like, if I want to spend, what, 25, 30, 40 euro, I'm probably going to buy, like, a plane. Um, or something like that, or even better, just save the money for when Microsoft Flight Sim comes out, so that I can buy the PMD G737 when, when uh, that releases. Which was allegedly not as good as Zebo. It's a damn good pla a damn good plane. Now I'll be looking into stuff like the uh, oh whatever releases for Microsoft Flight Sim when it's out. I guess I'm hoping somebody will release something like uh, DC-10 or MD-11, fairly sharpish. A good 744 would be nice. Go. Thank you very much. Good 744 would be nice. Um, 
What's our intercept on the ILS here? Uh, twenty-two hundred. So let's just let's just set twenty-two hundred here. It'll know what it wants to do. There we go. There's the airport over there, and it looks to be ooh, looks to be working, which is always nice. <laughs> There we go. Drag required, that's fine. Clear that, we need more drag. Flight detent. Might try the Microsoft one when it comes along. Be just, it'll be, it is just as complicated as um, X Plane. If you watch the feature discovery, like they're modeling every system. But you, like, even in X Plane, there is just an option to start up with the engines already running. If you just want to fly, I kind of like doing, uh, you know, cold and dark starts and whatnot. So that's the kind of stuff that interests me. Um, could we not be so fast on the downage, please, plane? Come on, start slowing. What's our flap one max? 250 knots. Can't even put out flaps one to five right now, because we're above 250 knots. Um, I just frequency. I need to get this up real quick. Hang on. Uh, now we're in kind of mild pack mode. I may go around one ten seven. Uh, one ten seven. Transfer. And it's a two six four. Hit Vorlock. Vorlock, approach. Second autopilot on. And I'm going to rather stupidly get us to flaps five right away. There we go. Actual flying, you're okay. It's the navigation stuff that gets you. You can never get it to work properly. It takes time to get used to... Um, the navigation stuff, for sure. Flat uh, gear down. Thousand to go. And flaps fifteen. There we go. Suddenly we're on profile and everything's under control. Go down to flaps 15 bug here. Whoa, that's too far. Keep flaps 15 until 40 me. Or keep a 160 until 40 me, which will actually require flaps 25. Oh, I just took you direct to the airport, like right to the tower. I mean, that's what happens. Uh, so we'll go 160 till 4, and then after that we'll dump down to our final 
approach speed. So in real life, at most airports, it's 160 knots to 4 dB. And after that, you bring out your final approach speed. And ha ah, ha ha ha, I nearly made the same mistake as I did last week. There's 4 DME, let's get it down to final approach. Uh, final approach speed is. Ah! 144 plus 9 is 149. And flaps 30. And flaps 40. 1,000 feet stabilized, Mr. Perch Altitude set. Mr. Perch Altitude is not set, but we won't be executing Mr. Perch. Okay. Can't remove the auto throttle as well. Approaching 2, 6, right. Clear to land. Four hundred. Three hundred. Two hundred. Think rate. One hundred. Think rate. Fifty. Forty. Come on, get down. Deep landing, deep landing. 3,000 meters remaining. Okay, reverse normal. Eighty knots. Manual braking. And retract the reverses. <laughs> Thank you for flying Ryanair. Last year, over 90% of our flights arrived on time. We hope you enjoyed yours, and we look forward to welcoming you on board again soon. Ryanair. Low fares, made simple. Turn off the dome. There we go. So we are at Yankee. Fantastic. Flight directors can come off. Ask him that. APU can get started up. What sound did I say? 105. Um, that'll be off Victor 7. It was 105, wasn't it? Yeah, one zero four one zero five. 
Not happy with the audio here. That's much better. Just doesn't have easy luck. Good. So here's our entrance to the ramp. Just coming up here, Victor Seven. Sierra and it is one zero five that I want to stop at which should be this one yes turn off can go off Didn't start turning anywhere near early enough for that. Oh, we do have a marshaller. I mean, that'll that'll do. go. Two blue, one red. Engines are dead. There's the jetway making its way over to the side of the plane. Did I park accurately? Yes, kind of. Why are the doors all still locked? Um, we can set the chocks. Connect to GPU. And terminate the flight leg, which should allow me to. Open the door? No. <laughs> Just doesn't want to let me open the doors. Okay. Uh, but that is going to do for today. I'll be back tomorrow with some farm sim. Until then, uh, next flights will be next week. Next ones will be more explained. Until then, uh, stay safe and goodbye.